Hello everyone and welcome back. I wasn't going to film anything today. Actually, I wasn't going to do anything on the guest house today and then got everything cleaned up in the house and we had chili dogs for lunch that Melissa made and she's in there canning beans and she's like, you know, I'm going to go out and at least put these beams up because I'm really not looking forward to doing that at all, but I'm not going to film anything. And then after I got the first one up, it's like, well, you know, they might want to see <laughs> what this looks like. So here we are, a day that I wasn't going to do anything out here, and I got one of the suckiest jobs done. Next year, when I get around to building the porch that'll go all the way across the front of this, there'll be a footing underneath it, out at the end here, and then on top of that footing, on top of the deck, will be a post that goes up to this beam on both sides. I'm not going to have time to do that before freeze up this year. And we got duck hunting coming, deer hunting coming, and I, I just want to get the roof on this thing, uh, get everything, you know, wrapped up that way so I can work inside, get the windows in. But anyway, that's how it'll be. But this is, it's in there good. I mean, I've got these angle braces. I've got this here. It's not going anywhere. I will go ahead and put a T this put a board like this on edge that goes all the way up so this can't bow at all because of weight and then I'm just going to leave this here the whole entire winter.
that's good enough for this afternoon. Like I said, more than I was planning on accomplishing today. Some people might be asking how come that outside truss right there isn't a gable end truss. Like that end one right there where every two feet, you know, it's just straight up and down. And the reason why is they can't. They have to be built like this because it spans the whole entire way. Nothing is underneath it. The gable end trusses don't have any like up and down. There's no strength to it. So I'll have to go in and put some uprights in there and then sheet it. And I could have done that first, uh, but it's not that far off the ground, so I'll get it later. It was just, it was enough to get these up there and be able to move around freely. I didn't want to add a whole bunch more weight to it. Next thing up is cutting the tails, and then we can lay some plywood. Might get to that tomorrow. My little hydraulic fluid catcher is working pretty good. It's got about four inches in the bottom of the pail. I'm just going to turn around and dump it right back into the hydraulic uh, reservoir and keep going until I can bring this thing in and get it fixed. Come back to this tomorrow. Good morning everybody. Got rain coming in a couple of days, uh, so my main goal now is to get this thing as water resistant as possible before that rain gets here and that means we have to get the plywood on the roof. What I did here is I just made myself a pattern so I can cut the tail or mark the tails with this before I cut them. When these trusses show up, they have, you know, the, these are set up for a 24 inch overhang, but they don't come at 24 inches. Some of these are 24 and a quarter, 24 and a half, 24 and three quarter. And you can do a 16 inch, 18 inch, 24, whatever you want to do. I want to do 24. It gets me away from the cantilever some more to get the, the water running off of there but you have to come through and cut them so I've come up and snapped a line my line is snapped at 22 and a half so then once I put my inch and a half subface on there I'll be out to the 24 and now I have to go through mark all these and cut them off but if you were to sit there and play around with your speed square doing that you're gonna be there all day so you just create a pattern this is a 412 so I put a 412 angle on that and then I can just go through and mark every one of them and then come back up here and cut them.
Well, I'm starting to lay the plywood now. Started with a five footer down here. Second row starts with a three footer. And one thing that's like, since I'm doing this by myself, you know, I cut all of the tails on the trusses. And if there would have been two of us here, I would have put the two by six subfascia on first before I did any of the plywood because I can put it all up there and nail it all from the top then. Now I'll have to come in afterwards, but being just a one man crew on this one here, you can see how the plywood hangs over a half inch. I hooked onto the end of the tail, went up 47 and a half because I wanted that to stick past just a little bit. Now I can take my two by six, come up on a ladder and just slap it up against the plywood and not have to sit there and well, I'd have to show you that, trying to get the right angle and, you know, with my speed square so that I don't go above the roof. Anyway, it's just easier for me to do it this way. I'll just slap it up and I can even run the ends wild if I wanted to and then just cut those off after. Much quicker than me trying to uh, do it from the top and, and, you know, go back and forth on both ends. But if there's more than one of you here, it's faster to do it from the top and then it's done. You can also uh, stand out there with one foot to kind of keep your balance. You see that box that I have up there that's just sitting on that three foot piece of plywood? So what that is, it's a plywood clip and you need to have these by code. You can see it right there and what that does is it keeps the plywood just like we did when we did the floor, where it wasn't tongue and groove, I had to have a block there so that it can't, you know, push down, go up and down in between, and it puts a little bit of a gap. Not much of one, but it does help because this kind of plywood, if it gets wet, it can swell, especially on the edges. So you got to have a plywood clip, and once again, the way to get around that for code, if you don't have any, is to block every seam and all you would need to do is have like a two by four just going up and down staple staple but then we usually take an eight penny nail and then because you still have to space the plywood even if you have a block so we'll just use an eight penny nail for a spacer and then you can get around like if you have a porch or something you're doing it where it's going to take you an hour to plywood the whole thing and you don't have any plywood clips you know by the time you went to the store got plywood clips, clips and came back you could plywood the whole thing and just use the blocks, you know, and space it. And that six by six, that was my brilliant invention since the, the whatever that thing's called on there, uh, won't go level until I get it fixed. That was a good way so I could get the plywood up there and be level enough so I could lift it without it falling off the forks. Oh, I just got delayed for two hours because they're gonna run the high-speed internet into the house. They're not going to be hooking it up yet. They're hoping to get that hooked up yet this year, but anyway, I had to move some stuff and then they had to locate some stuff and then I did lunch. Now it's time to get back up here and lay some more plywood.
I have this side done except for that top 16 inch ripper. I'm going to start on the other side though. I think I'm going to be short plywood and I'd rather be hauling up 16 inch pieces versus a whole bunch of, you know, or just even a few of the bigger ones. So I think I'll cut the tails on that side and we'll get started. All the tails are cut and somebody might ask why don't I just cut the tails before we set the trusses up and you really can I mean you can but it's not gonna be as accurate I mean I set everything perfect but still you can't really trust yourself you just never know if the end of the truss where you set it with sometimes it's chipped off a little bit and look at these here like this piece here I cut off inch and a half this one's an inch and three sixteenths so that's a big difference. You can't trust the, uh, trust the trusses because when they're at the truss company, you know, every piece gets cut beforehand and then they have a machine and they put them together and then the machine puts a, a steel gusset on there. I've seen sometimes where, <laughs> like here is the truss and the next one is, you know, a full quarter inch away. And so you just, and you know, which is going to affect your length. So if you cut them on the ground, you're just going to be, you know, roughly right on. Where here, I know everything is perfect. And I could have came up and cut all these with the ladder. It just takes a lot longer. If you just, you know, once you get used to it and you can reach over and cut those off. But you got to be careful, especially when you get the new guy on the job and you shove him up there to cut the tails. Because if you don't keep the bed of the saw tight against the truss, all of a sudden you're cutting a you know a 20 degree angle on the end and it's never the right way angle you know it's going to make a bow in your in your sub patient when you put it on so you really got to watch that doing this by yourself and you don't have a lift what you do is you put a kicker here and run a couple of two by fours or two by sixes out with kickers going down and then you can take that plywood and just lean it up against there and only do a few sheets at first and then you have to pull them up to get the first row on so you're not fighting it you know and then after that you can stack a bunch against there I've had to do that many times
Almost finished it tonight. It's seven o'clock. I need all I need is a half hour more. I'm five sheets short. If I wouldn't have lost two hours today with them putting in the uh, or running all the line for the fiber optic, I could have ran and got this, but I'll have to go get it in the morning. Yeah, this is done. Got the fly rafters on the back, which is right there. This is a fly rafter. Like I said, I'll run and get that stuff tomorrow morning and I'll be back here by probably 8.30. Get the plywood on and then go ahead and get the, it's not tar paper, whatever that stuff is now. Get that on here so it's waterproof and I will be able to breathe the sigh of relief. Good morning everybody. I ran up to the lumber yard this morning and got the plywood that I was short. I got some for the roof and some for that front gable end. All this afternoon I've just been putting this, uh, I don't even know, usually it's I would put tar paper and put ice and storm on the, or weather shield on the bottom. And now they're using this stuff. I've never used it before. It's easy to work with. And I was worried that it was going to be slippery, but it's not bad at all. And I can't bring the camera up there, so I just haven't been filming it. But I got this side done. And now I think I have enough for two more rolls on the other side. And then tomorrow morning I'm going to have to go get another roll. Thought I had enough again, but I had forgot about the porch. I needed a little more than 40 feet, so I have a stake down here, and I have a stake down there, and I just pull it between. This is easier now, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but this is easier now when the roll was full, because it was a 250 foot roll, to handle it myself. Just cut it, because this stuff is pretty light. Drag it up there, and get it all fastened down.
I'm just putting on the house wrap now. Those angle braces actually could have just came off. Once that plywood is nailed, it'd be pretty hard to move that, but since I'm not going to get this uh, front porch and deck on this fall, and we get some of those 70 mile an hour winds in the winter time, I think I'll just leave them up there for the winter and just a little added something. I was two rows short with the, the waterproofing membrane up there, and I'll go get that in the morning and get that on right away. It's going to be kind of windy tomorrow, but hot. And then tomorrow night the rain comes in. You can see that I left a gap up there. That's because when I do a metal roof on here, I'm going to want to do a venter ridge type of a top. I, I know you can put regular roof vents through a steel roof, but all they are is really siliconed on there. And I'm not a big fan of the ridge vent at all in, in the state of Minnesota. Because you got to figure that, that, you know, it comes from your overhang, it takes the air up through here, and then it goes through your vents to keep your attic from getting warm, keeps the ice from getting on your, on your shingles or your metal roof, whatever. And so that warm air goes out. Well, if we get a two foot snowfall, I mean, there's, for sure this winter, there's gonna be two feet of snow up on top of there. Well, you're thinking that warm air, that, because always some warm air will bleed up into the rafters. Well, when the warm air hits snow, it kind of turns to ice. And to me, it seems like then it wouldn't, the air wouldn't be able to flow very good, you know? I mean, even heavy, wet, packed snow. But anyway, it's legal, so I still think I'm gonna put vents on the end of each gable end to help, you know, air things out. Uh, but I wouldn't do that until I'm gonna do siding. So that's up there for now, but I, I have the membrane going right over it so that can be waterproof for, for now. And I think that stuff up there has, I don't know, 90 day UV rating. The stuff that we're, I'm putting on the outside, the house wrap has a 300 day. So, I, cause I doubt I'll get it sided before winter either. So it'll be, it'll be fine. Look at that back. Uh, addition on the tent. <laughs> All that is is house wrap that I painted and it's been there for years and never have any trouble. One of the questions that I got uh, quite a few times actually and for you guys it was three videos ago but they wanted to know why I didn't use the forklift or telehandler to lift up the walls and I've actually done that before. You know I could have built this in one piece and used that to lift it but it, it poses some problems. First of all you're lifting in the center of a wall, so as you lift, you're going to get a, a bow to it as you're lifting because you're not lifting out here on the outer corners. And the thing is, although I can do it, uh, you have to feather lifting with moving backwards at the same time. And it's very hard, and you know, normally what will happen is uh, you won't get one of them right, and you only has to be maybe a half inch of lifting it too high and then you took and you lifted your bottom plate off the wall and it cracked out all those nails it just gets to be uh, it's a lot of work like I said I've done it before but I don't like to do it I'd rather lift it up this way here and well once you start racking a wall like that that you just put together as soon as it bends and stuff everything is moving and it just to me isn't going to be quite as strong I have done it before though if we have like a 20 foot high wall, something that you just can't lift where you can put that boom out all the way out there and lift up on it and go and then you just have guys, you know, kind of on each side guiding it up and go really nice and slow. But for something this small, I would much rather do it the way that we did it, you know, and just lifted it up by hand. Another question that I've got is am I going to do spray foam insulation? or fiberglass bats, and I'm definitely gonna do fiberglass bats. Star foam, I mean, the blow, you know, the blowed foam or whatever is awesome stuff, but it's also at a minimum three times more expensive. And you know, money doesn't grow on trees, so it's just gonna be the regular fiberglass on the walls and down, you know, below, and uh, then I'll just be blowing whatever it is I'll do up in the, up in the, in the rafters there. And at that time, I might blow some into the workshop too. We'll see. Still about two and a half weeks until the windows come, but I do have 
The one for the bathroom and this one here, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy because there was like six or seven of them in stock at the store instead of ordering it and having to wait for three weeks. And when I do put one of these in, I don't know if I'm gonna just do a total separate video on the proper way to install windows. There definitely is a proper way to do it and uh, I'd like to go through that step by step. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching. I'm gonna end this one now. People seem to like to hear about the stuff my dad would say and everything back, way back when I worked for him. And one thing that he told me when I first started, he said is never do anything unless you know why you're doing it. Like if I'm cutting, uh, back then we had to do a lot of hand framing on roofs and uh, like, you know, why am I doing a long angle, you know, with a 30 degree angle on it. And, you know, um, he just said, and I was a lot of times the cutter. I have cut a lot. Like I would have, you know, when we, if you're doing a two story walkout, I'm not getting the lift up there with plywood. And, you know, prior to even having a forklift, I had years and years where we never had a forklift. And uh, so I would be up on that second floor and I would have, you know, three, four guys up on the roof and I would be cutting plywood. And these weren't these little simple houses like this little project. These were big houses, you 12, 12 roofs and just, uh, and you know, if you know why you're cutting what you're cutting or why you're doing what you're doing, like with layout and everything, it just makes it a lot simpler. And I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but you know, and then I would get yelled at when I was taking too long to figure out what I was doing, you know, <laughs> so it was kind of a give or take, but you know, and now you get to this point where you look at a blueprint and I can pretty much walk through the whole entire house and know exactly what it's going to look like, except for paint color on the walls, you know. So anyway, that was one piece of advice that I think is, is true. Don't do anything. It could, you know, for regular life too. Why are you, whatever you're going to have to do, you should probably know why you're doing it before you do it. I will see you guys on the next video.